so it seems though in the morning when I when I wake up that all of the everything is wide open at the surface and I can um, energetically see uh, see things so that as I go through the day they become like cut off the more I get into my avatar and into my ego and into my daily routines or routines I don't even know that I have any routines really but the more I get into my daily you know get on with my day and do things that in this world that I need to be doing in the physical world then I get more and more kind of disconnected from um, the uh, higher realms. But it seems though we are all just like we're all connected to God from it's it's like I see that we're all it sounds so corny but like the children of God this whole this whole twin flame thing is just it allows you to see things in a different way and I can see that we are all connected, like our light is connected to the eternal light and we are like little droplets down in these little physical bodies. And I see it like when we're in our ego mind and I see it more and more, it's like, a, it's like watching a comedy. You know, when I go into, say I go into town and there's lots of people and I'm watching the people running around and everybody looks so lost and everybody looks so worried and everybody's like in this hurry to do things that they have to do. And it almost looks like, and, and the look on their face is like, and I'm saying this without judgment, I'm, you know, because I'm there a lot of the time too. It's, it's an observation. And they look so lost and like little, little kids running around trying to make sense of things, trying to find themselves, trying to do the important stuff. Um, taking this life way too seriously and uh, trying to make things happen instead of just allowing things to flow and just being, it's like everybody forgot who they are. It's like everybody doesn't know they're lost in this ego, which the ego is like this uh, separation from God or separation from the all, the ego. And the ego serves a purpose in this life. I'm not, you know, I understand that. The ego is a self of sense, a sense of self, and allows allows us to expand and to actually experience this uh, this uh, life experience, and it, it 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 allows energy to come into a point with matter and collect more meda meda more intelligence like. It's like uh, making the energy more intelligent um, by way of masses. But we're just one little collective point. It's like having a million little spoons in the ocean collecting you know, drops. So, and we're all part of one big collective. And so th this is, you know, there was a video that I did last night when I had this really like overwhelming, um, I'll get all emotional again, uh, overwhelming realizations. And, and um, so I kind of feel like this is a continuation of that. I keep on getting, getting further and further. And I had like a really strange dream that I wasn't, my, that the essence of the dream is that I wasn't being honest, but not in a way of lying outwardly, but in a way of hiding things. And I realized I don't want to feel that in my life. I want to be straightforward, honest, and rambling. But I feel as though also with my twin flame, that we are connected on different levels 
and the high we're, and it's really funny because usually when you meet a partner you collect you first connect on the physical and then you slowly start connecting until you get to the higher realms if you even get there yeah, it's like you connect first from your lower and then and then go it goes up from there but with my twin flame it's like we have these different conversations going on on these different levels and so in the physical level we still haven't been able to well we i'm not going to say it like that we are still in the coming together and working out all of the little you know fungies but it's like it's like the opposite it's like we're completely connected from here with unconditional love and understanding and commitment and everything that it entails at this point and then we're slowly bringing it down to where we can connect down on the level of the physical and it's like bringing it into oh this is perfect it's like bringing it, it's, this is also like lately i have been like saying thank you and i realize that my hands come this way automatically it's like and it's and it's perfect because it's like two mirror images of the same thing coming together and uh that's what it feels like too it feels like we are connected here and we are slowly bringing the energy down to make the connection also on the physical level. But here it's, it's perfectly harmonious. And it's like we're talking on these different levels. So everything that he says to me, it speaks to me on all these different levels. So a lot of times he'll say something and it'll be like, okay, wait, I have to, I have to bring it down into the different levels to see what it means on each level and usually where it gets stuck or where the pain is is on the very very lower levels where where ego is still there or where still my uh you know my ego jumps up or and that's another thing that i was talking about on one of my previous videos about about transcending the ego the ego has to go out the door and you have to come into complete surrender because as human beings, we've collected so much trash on top of our our pure being, our pure soul being that needs to be shed, shedded, that we need to shed before we can have that complete coming together. And so still on this base level down here, there's still things that I need to shed, reactions, actions, um, I can see for him that it's also a process and in knowing my process and be able to see myself there's nothing but love there and nothing but admiration and and empathy i i completely get it i completely get it and i know how painful it is to hit up against these walls in ourselves of these things that we that we know that we're in error with we have these reactions to things that are false um, or hangups or 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 ways of thinking that we don't even realize these these mind loops that we're in that we don't even realize one of the big ones for me is being able to get out and and support myself properly like I want to in the physical world support myself monetarily I mean I, not uh, spiritually oh you're doing so good yeah <laughs> But, you know, being able to provide for myself in this 3D world, this physical world. And that is one of the things that I'm working on. I really realize that it is at a spiritual level. It's not just in the physical level. of, And the more that I bang my head up against the wall, the more my head hurts. So I know that I'm searching when when i'm searching with my mind for the for the solutions or to to solve it i'm searching up in what i already know so i'm like in the same little mud puddle searching more and more in the mud puddle when there's this vast ocean out there that i could go look in 
but because I'm in this little mud puddle, the way that I was taught to think, and I'm still surrounded by that with uh, my parents and the where I live. So I have reinforcements of that's the way you think you have to get out there and work really, really hard and uh, sell yourself and exploit yourself and, uh, you know, uh, physical labor was the, we, we, yeah, we really grew up on, it. it's hard to make a living, this mindset, yeah, it's hard to make a living and that's how it is and, and uh, I need to get out there and work and labor and see even just talking about this helps me <laughs> because obviously that's not true for everybody I mean obviously I see people all over the place I've been there before where you don't have to work really hard you just have to work smart or or allow things to flow in and as long as I'm stuck in this mindset I, I still am searching for the, the solutions in the same little loop. And um, as long as I'm in the loop, that same little loop, I'm not going to find the answers. I'm going to keep finding the same answers, the same answers, the same answers. And I realize in this uh, spiritual awakening that it's a matter of just letting the whole loop go and trusting. See, that's where the leap of faith comes in. It's also the same thing with the, with the with the twin flame. You know, you can't be in that mind loop because the answers aren't from here because the connection is here first and your mind is way down here with your ego. And it's in the in the physical world is where you it's like your let's say if you have a big bowl that you collect all of your data in that you can pull out and use and so so your mind is the user of all this data, the collective point of all this data and the figuring outer. Um, but your soul is at a higher level. It doesn't have a, uh, you know, it, it, it's what has been brought into this temple or body, physical body. But it in itself doesn't have a mind. It's energy. So it doesn't have this bowl to collect things in. So we're already connected at that soul level. It's all the crap down here on the bottom that is causing all of the friction because we're the same up here, the same. That's why it's so funky. It's, it's so funky. It's like looking in, your, in this mirror that's you, but different because all of the things that was collected into his bowl are different than the things and it's funny because it's similar things like maybe not similar uh experiences in such a way but uh, the um, similar hardships let's say if i've gone through all sorts of things in my life that i have had to overcome and that have caused me grief um then he has had similar grievances but from different experiences through different experiences so we're both kind of overcoming the same grievances. Not exactly, not exactly, but we are both kind of the same essence overcoming major grievances that, that, we've, that we've experienced in this lifetime and having to deal with them and mindsets and ways of dealing with them and it doesn't always come together on this level. And it, you're also like really afraid of this connection because it's what you want the most. <laughs> and the more you try to figure out, it's just like the, the poverty, poverty mindset that I was talking about. The more you try to figure it out with your mind down here on this level, the, the, the more you get stuck and hitting up against that wall because up here you're already connected so down here it's just kind of you have to let go of your ego and let go of everything that you've ever known and allow new things to come in and it's the same thing with like the poverty mindset you know quit you know digging around in the same little mud puddle for the answers I, you know if i'm if i'm using my the same mind that is in this poverty mindset to try to solve the problems. I'm trying to solve the problems from that mindset. And 
it's ridiculous to think that from a poverty mindset, I'm going to find the solutions for a um, mindset of total financial freedom or or of just letting go and allowing the things to be because I know that this is an abundant world. I can see it all around me. I know in different areas of my life that I have total abundance and I've never had to dig around in the mud puddle to find it, you know, with love and relationships and and my connection with nature and and my uh, ability to just get out and do things and not be afraid. Uh, and I see people that in those things are stuck. And for me, it's just like, well, what are you holding on to? You, you're getting your own self all stuck up because I can see through it because I'm not stuck in those places. So let's say I met a girlfriend that all of her relationships are <laughs> like really funky. And I'm not saying this in a judgmental way. I'm saying it in an observant, observ observant way. And I can just see that every time she gets into a relationship with somebody that she really likes, male or female, she starts trying to grasp it and trying to hold on to it and try to, and she funks it all up instead of just coming in. And she's a cool person, you know, at the soul level, we really connected. It was like, but you can't be in touch with her because she's always like trying to grasp at it and trying to hold on to it. And then she's going to come and then she's afraid to come and then she's not going to come. And then, and you, and she's so flippant, flippant that you just can't be in touch with her. Because you can't build a relationship on something that's constantly going like this. And it's so obvious to me because because with me, I'm, I've always had, and I, I don't even know if it was always, but I have a natural ability. I've had, I grew up with lots of siblings. I have a natural ability of knowing how to work with people or, or connecting with people. And so for me, it's really obvious to see what she's doing that's that's flipping her own self out but she can't see it because she's in her little mud puddle instead of just letting the little mud puddle go and flowing with it into the into this vast sea and uh so it, i feel like it's the same thing and it's the same thing with the twin flame relationship you just kind of have to surrender it and so i'm learning how to surrender it and I think that as I'm learning how to surrender that, because there's no choice and because it's so activated, it's, it's like all encompassing. It takes over your whole being. It takes over your whole mind. It's almost like you can't think of anything else. It's almost like you don't even, you can't, um, litafked. Litafked is like, uh, that's a Hebrew word for like, you can't function. because this is always in your mind. And the thing is with that is that you can't function until you do something about it. When you stand up in your power and you start taking responsibility, then all of a sudden you can function like super in all the different modes. So by having to deal with this twin flame um, experience and path that I'm on, I, I'm pretty much forced to, because otherwise I'd just be sitting going like this all day. So you're pretty much forced to having to do it. And by having to do that, I see how it is repairing because in the letting go, it's the same letting go as letting go of my mud pedal and learning how to trust because there's no other choice. You have to let go and learn how to trust. And it's allowing me to realize myself in other areas too, learning how to let go and trust in, in the world will provide for me because it's the same thing and allowing myself to just let go and understand that when I am in my spirit place, the place that's up here at the top of the pyramid, when I'm in my spirit, uh, not spirit, like my soul, when I'm in my uh, true nature and being 100% honest, and that comes back to my dream that I had. What a funky dream. Sheesh. So when I'm in, true to myself and I'm in my true being's way of being, I'm provided for just in being. And I'm starting to realize that. And 
not only am I provided for in a way of getting just taking, it's that I am, um, it's like an even give, give, it's like an allowance. It's not even, I don't even want to use the words give, take, because those words have like uh, attached energy to them that I, I don't feel is right in this instance. It's like coming into my true nature and allowing myself to shine out who I am and give to the world what um, what I have to offer, like my best foot forward or the fruit. It's like the tree that I saw the other day with the Clementinas. I was thinking how it's bringing forth its beauty and its gifts to the world and how we as human beings <clears throat> are exploiting nature. You know, instead of allowing nature to give us its fruit, like the Clementina tree on the side of the hill, that it's giving its fruit to whoever takes. And through that, it is also expanding its life by its seeds going, going back into the ground, going into seed. It's feeding us. It's feeding nature. It's nourishing the ground around it, which self nourishes itself because it's the tree, the, the rotten fruit falls to the ground and it comes back in through the roots. So it's like a self cycle of life. And we are totally exploiting nature by like almost like raping it from its fruit and we're doing the same thing to our humans you know like we bring forth our children which are our gifts to the world and we nurture them and bring them up and and show them the beauty and and their beautiful beings and we're like handing them over to the army for some some doofus that that i don't even have respect for that sits at the top and tells them where to go and and then tells them oh yeah uh, it's going to be an honor if you die for this cause, whatever the cause is that I say it is at any given point in time. Go fight. Fight. Instead of like just enjoying life and nature and everything that there is, all the splendor. It's God's. So that's where we're so as, as, as a um, species. What's going on there? You don't see the birds out there, you know. I don't know. So I'm rambling. I'm loving this because it's my own self-therapy too. I'm working through this and I'm sharing what I'm working through. Um, also, I'm putting myself out there. Um, and I feel like it's in the morning I get up and it's my God's work. So if I have my God's work settled, the rest of my day seems to go so much easier. And by God's work, I mean, it's like uh, by not hiding from myself and putting out there truly what, what I'm going through and what um, one of the things is, is that I know that I know how to articulate and go into deep detail about things that I'm going through and put them into words. And hopefully whoever this reaches, it resonates with them and, and it helps them understand what they're going through too. And to kind of understand it on a different, on a higher level. Um, but it's also for me, I'm, I'm talking it out as I'm figuring it out and it's strengthening me on this path because by bringing it out of here, it's bringing me out of going like this and, and all these, these thoughts rattling around in my mind. And it's taking like this cloud of thoughts and bringing it down into words. So it is mega, there we go. It's coming back to the, the reflection of the two. And it's bringing it out into the world as, as a fine, like, uh, see it as like a golden string because in order to bring it into words, you have to refine the thoughts and bring them down into um, precise. You have to bring them into something that's more precise in order to bring them into words. And then I understand what I'm understanding. And it really gives me also peace and peace of mind. And, and it gives me what to work on. So now I got this part of the puzzle and put it into words. And I also have it back for reference because it, I slip. 
you know, like all of us, we're going through this path and we're all, we're all going through it together. It is a funky, funk, funk. But I guarantee you that when you start doing the work and you're working through it and you know that you are, are doing what you can, it gives you resolve and it, um, takes away that shakiness and it, um, um, because you know that you're taking responsibility for it and you're doing something, you're doing something for it. So even if you're not all the way there yet, or you, but you know that you're on the path, on the God path. So, uh, now it is like practice, practicing it. So a quick way into it really is by, like I said in, la in the video I did last night is connecting to God connecting to God because the the point that the souls are connecting are at the same point that we're connected to God. So it's like there's a portal there and we're coming out of the same portal. So it's like um, our twin flame and us are coming from the same point. So the way I see it is that there's God, which is all and we are these little like droplets, little God droplets, but we're still connected to source energy because otherwise we wouldn't have life in us. That's the life. It's, the, it's, it's God running through us. It's, and God is a word with so many different meanings attached to it. So I just want to call it like source energy or, or the divine or life energy or the universe or whatever you want. Universe already it's like life energy or, or something, but we are connected at, at the, at, at the root still to this life force. Like you would see it as like these little electric cars that have the, so they're, they can go wherever they want to go, but they're always have to be connected for the life to be flowing through them. So it's kind of like that. Only we don't, we have this ego, which is like this tool for us to use to collect all of this. And if we didn't have the illusion that we were separate from God, then we would realize that nothing really matters anyway, because this body is just part of the cycle. You know, this body is nothing to hold on to. We're going through this life experience. Then we're going to go back to the all. We're going to come back down. It's going to keep on going. We're in the cycle. And just like you see in the physical world that, you know, all the plants, you can see the cycles of the plants really quickly because they go through the, the cycle quick, but nothing is gone. So it's just like the fruit that I was saying from the Clementina tree. So the fruit falls to the ground and it goes back into the ground. It mishmashes and the worms get it and the flies get it. And it becomes a part of the whole big mishmash. And we're just a big part of the mishmash too. We're the same thing. We eat the plants and we eat the animals. Ooh, hopefully not, but I, 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 I become uh, vegan and during this process, uh, this awakening process and, and the thought of eating other, other live beings that came here with this and you have this wonderful life and we just take it away from them to nourish off of them. It's just like this thought of total, like greedy, uh, self-centered, I don't know. And it's painful. It's a painful thought. But we're part of this big mishmash too. You know, it's all just a big cycle and we're all part of it too. Just think about the, the you know, the, the, the plants that we eat are nourished from the ground or nourished and, and they're nourished from other plants that already went bad and animals that are buried in the ground and all of the minerals and all of the, the, uh, all of the elements are all mixed up in this big mishmash and we're all part of it. The bo our body is made up of all of this. And so to think, to think that we are separate from this big moving, breathing, live planet is just ludicrous. We're, we're just a part of it. You, you think about it. Think about gravity. We're all stuck to the earth. We go back into the earth. We're part of this earth. It's all part of God. We're God. We're part of God. We just have an energy source. We're also where everything does. Everything is vibrating. So we never really truly die. We're not going anywhere. It's not like 
we die and then we get flipped off the planet somewhere. No, we're <laughs> what uh, what we're made up of is stardust. We have always been here. We're ancient, ancient, ancient creatures. Just keep on coming back and going in, and, and so we know that this life force doesn't go anywhere either. I mean, if you, if you really think about it, you know that it doesn't because it, it, it just changes form. And so we are very extremely lucky to, you know, I, I, I don't like the word lucky. Lucky is not a precise word. We are privileged to have this life experience. And going back to like the ego is just the sense of us being separate from an individuals, but it also gives us a sense of being lost and disconnected from. So we're like children of God running around feeling like we're disconnected. We're disconnected. We're always searching for, for that higher connection. And when you realize that that higher connection is always there and you find that connection with God, it just gives you peace in this life. It's like, it's like you're on a ride and you just get to enjoy it because you have this peace that you're connected to, that you're always connected, that all is good. It's just when you get disconnected and you get into your ego mind and which happens, you know, when you're, when you wake up in the morning, you're most connected. And that is a good time to, to give thanks and, and strengthen that connection through meditation and giving thanks and, and Demian uh, Mudrach, like uh, I've been doing lately, this hip, hypno, hypno thing, whatever. But it's like a guided, it's like a further guided, uh, uh, guided meditation where you can go in, where you go into your internal self and you, and you uh, imagine and feel the things that you want to create in this 3D world. And it is something else funky. Something else funky. If I remember, I'll put a link. The one that I do is in Hebrew. Thank you. Thank you for having all of those uh, resources out there to help and to help connect. So in the morning, we naturally wake up more connected. You know, it's that kind of a halfway in between sleep and wake. Right now, that's that's part of the reason why I flipped out the camera and I'm doing this video is because I, uh, a lot of times I get messages. I wake up in the morning and I get all sorts of divine messages. Say I just, I write them down. I have books and books and books of messages. I love this. So this one I'm going to have to do a video on. It's about, you see, up here is the God connection. And then down here is the physical. And I know that there are these different levels in between that I don't have names for. But I know because I can feel them with my twin flame that we are connected on the higher level and that we're going down like this pyramid until we connect, able to connect on the physical. Um, he drives me nuts. He drives me absolutely banana crackers. And I think he does it on purpose to like shake me all up to get me like sh sh shaken up because at the same time that he gets like, it's like he has me on, on like a, on like a, 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 like, like he's holding me from the top and going, let's shake, 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 shake so that I'll get all shook up and like off balance and all these different, all those different levels. I'm off balance wherever I'm, wherever I'm not being like a straight line. So I'm off balance until I get my shit together. <laughs> But I'm getting my shit together, but it's like he shakes me off like everywhere that I'm. It's like it's like I'm being poked all over the place. Like every place that I'm not in in sync with God, or with my God divine higher being, it's like it's it's like you have these sores and somebody's coming along and and, and poking a finger in them. But it's like it's like it's like half like energetically. I see it as like a joke. I see it as like. Oh yeah, you think that? Well, here, poke. How's that feel? Oh, that's bad, bad, bad. Now you go fix that one, and then you get poked from over here. It's like, and it's like I get poked from all the different sides. Poked, but it's like poked up, <laughs> up the pyramid. It's like, 
I feel like I'm being poked into the right. <laughs> Poked into the right direction. Yeah, another thing about 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 uh, having a, flim, a twin flame is that the sense of humor, the sense of humor when it's like you have the same sense of humor, and when when he's funny, it's like he's the funniest. Also, when he's not trying to be funny, <laughs> he's funny, <laughs> and also. And also the things that he stuck up on, I see, I, I like see him and I see him as like this, I can just see him by like the soul levels. Like he's just so pure and clean and, and, and like just wonderful. And then I see him, when I see him get caught up on things, it's like, what are you getting caught up on? What's that all about? It's like, really? But, but I know I, <laughs> I know that if I see <laughs> and he and he's done the work. He's like he's done he's guiding me through my work. So he is like crazy genius. But <laughs> <laughs> but I know, and I'm like stuck in all these different little, little crapsies in my uh, avatar, you know, in my mind, in my ego mind, there's all these little, you know, all the little points that I'm getting poked in. And uh, I find it humorous. I find it humorous when you, when you start letting go and you just let things be, it's just like, it's like, at first you're like all embarrassed and trying to make excuses. Oh no. And then, but, but you know, there, there's no point to it because he sees right through it. He sees right through it. So lately it's just been like, oh, go through the pain, the pain of error. The ego wants to jump up and jump out and start lashing and rah, 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 rah. the ego, the, you learn how to just like your ego, you, you your ego becomes like your tool. It just becomes something that you reign over, like like if you had horses and you control them, so your higher being starts to being able to control the ego, and then you start seeing the ego as like this awesome tool that you get to use in this life experience. It's like awesome. This uh, coming to be and coming, you know, into your higher self, you really start tightening up. So you start really uh, being in control of your emotions, of your ego, of your mind, of what you allow into your mind. You start thinking about the words that you use because you realize that your words are creating your reality as you go. You know, if you keep on beating the same drum, you're going to keep getting the same results. So you start changing your language into a language that is actually guiding your life in the direction that you want. And it, uh, it requires a lot of attention of paying attention to your words, to what you allow in your mind of the seeds that you allow, you know, if you, there's a really good book by James Allen. It was written, I think in the 1800s sometime. And I really think that it uh, deserves to get a lot of attention, uh, especially during this time uh, in humanity. Um, uh, it's called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. You can find it on YouTube. It's in public domain and it is an audio book. You can find an audio book of it if you want to just listen to it. And it's one of those books that you just listen to over and over and over. It's one of those books that you really want to uh, brainwash yourself with. And the author writes it. It's it's like the language that he uses is so poetic. And every chapter or section, I don't even think he calls them chapters, but every section at the end, he has like this little um, like poem that he wrote about the subject or on the subject with the, with analogies and stuff. And it's just beautiful. It like tickles your mind. It's like giving your mind flowers. It's like, that's so pretty <laughs> for your mind. Um, uh, 
Okay, well, I think I'm going to sum that up because how long have I been talking? Wow, 40 minutes. So I, if you're on this fl a twin flame journey with me and you've been listening to me and you have, um, I hope that this clears things up for you. It's clearing things up for me. And uh, I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Uh, this uh, this twin twin flame journey is... I know that you can feel, you know, it is an individual path and each of us are doing our own individual work and it is ours alone to do, but it does give peace of mind to know that there are other people that are on this path and that are hitting up against, hitting up against, I don't see, choosing my words, that are coming to um, that are also coming to and going through the journey alongside us. Uh, it gives us comfort and also being able to hear and see what other people are going through. So really, uh, one thing that I've realized in myself that really has given me a lot of comfort is that when I take responsibility and stand up and start doing the work and really, no matter what it is, face my demons, um, and decide and really facing your demons. You don't know how to take your demons on because you don't even really know what your demons are. Uh, but once you start deciding that you're going to face your demons straight on and allow yourself to go down this path and take a leap of faith, even if you don't even know what that means, because, because on this path, you have to take a leap of faith and many different times you have to just release and, and say, okay, whatever, whatever happens, I'm going forward. And you jump onto a path that you don't know and you let go of the old before you know what the new is. Um, and it's almost like we don't have a choice unless we want to hold on to the past, hold on to the past, hold on to the past. And then we're just living our life in this loop and we're looping with our twin flame. We're holding them in place as well because they can't go forward without a partner to go forward with. And so it's, it's like we are designating ourselves into this pain loop and also our partner. So the way I see it is that we can be leaders in this, that we can go forward. And as we step forward, it is giving ourselves the gift of release. And the further we go forward, the more our path opens up for us and the quicker it goes because the closer we become and the easier it becomes to let go. And so it becomes like a um, humanute, like um, it's like an art. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. But we're also giving our partner the, um, the gift. It's like a gift of love. When we decide to do the work, we can also expand them on their path because in our letting go, they're also kind of forced to let go because there's nothing for them to hold on to. And this is also in the like the runners and the and the runner afters. When you let go and you let ease come in, it just fills you the ease and your partner uh, has nothing to hold. It's against ease. When it's easy, there's nothing to get caught up on. So one can't loop, stay in the loops without the other. If the other let go, then the other has to let go too. So it's like giving the gift. And, um, and it's a gift of unconditional love. Really, it's like it doesn't matter what you're caught up on. I'm not going to take it personally. You know, he has his own journey that he has to do. And, in, and just like I have my own journey that I have to do. And I can't hold his journey against him because he has to do it. And it's also for me. 
because the work that he's doing is setting me free also. The more he does his self-work, no matter who it's with, the more he is doing his self-worth work and finding his self-worth. <laughs> See, everything happens for a reason. The, the more I am set free and the more I'm set free, the more I set him free. It's kind of like this, it's like this dance we're doing. And in order to lower your ego, you have to find that unconditional love, I'm realizing. Because the unconditional love allows you not to get hurt or not to feel hurt, get hurt. You feel hurt. And when you're hurt, it's in you. It's your own hurt. It's not, you know, nobody's doing it to you. It's places that in you are not uh, complete. So places that you're hurt are places to start digging and allowing the hurt to let go. Okay. So if you've watched, I'm sending you lots and lots of love and um, strength and strengthening you on this path and strengthening me on this path. and. Um, I want to say, like, may the source be with you. May the power be with you. <laughs> I'm wishing you all good things. All good things. It's a doozy.